Okay, so uh, let me start with this. Uh, maybe also I, I can discuss because in the previous core, I did this exercise too, okay? It took a while, but you know, I finally uh, learned some you know, functional programming you know, doing with R. So we, we can do that. And then, uh, you know, when you fix your computer, then the, ne the next uh, week, then we can start with, uh, with chapter five. What do you think? Yeah, I was thinking even if, if we have, uh, we, can, we can do this uh, exercises and the, this, this will take mm -hmm. some time, you know. But then sure. um, I can uh, use this uh, iPad for looking at the uh, chapter and then talking okay. with the other one. So we can have an, a little introduction if you like uh, of the okay. chapter, or sure. otherwise we could just uh, do it next week. I mean, if, if you are able, you know, to, to present something of the chapter five, you know, uh, be, be my guest, you're welcome, okay? You, you copy that? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Good. Okay, so uh, let's start with this exercise, okay? It says that uh, it's based on this uh, type of uh, chart, okay? The G, uh, uh, G, Galley, uh, G Gallery uh, uh, Library the package, and what the exercise was is, you know, uh, the purpose it was to look at the relationships between these STL-based uh, features, the seasonal uh, trend and uh, lag features from the seasonal uh, decomposition for, but in, in particular for the tourism uh, data. So the first thing that I did, okay, when I was doing this exercise is, uh, you know, you, you load your, your packages, right? You know, your usual suspects, uh, tidyverse, FPP3, et cetera. And then what you start doing is that you load your tourism uh, uh, data, which is included in the package. And then when you have this, okay, let me show you here. Okay, so when you, uh, you know, do a glimpse of the tourism package is by quarter, the, 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 the period is by quarter. It has the region, the state, the purpose, and the trips. So what we need to do is from this tourism uh, data, what we have to do is first filter the holidays, right? So we're going to do filter purpose equal holiday. And that's going to give us only, right? only the holiday uh, series for each state, region, et cetera. Then using the package, uh, the features package, which is included in the FF, FPP3, uh, you know, me mega package, what we're going to do is call those, those features, but then select them, right? Because you have, you know, many features there that, you know, you're not going to use, okay? You will have about 48 of, of, of them that the package, you know, uh, g g gives you, you know, without any, any, any um, filtering. So what I did was uh, get those features and then just select the, the features that, that the, the, the columns that, that I need. So I did the select by state, okay? Because the question is, which is the peak quarter for holidays in each state. So I need the column for state, which are, we're going to see that there are seven uh, states around the, the country of Australia. Then we are going to use contains for with the select uh, function. We're going to use contains to bring the trend, the, the columns that have a trend in the name and also the seasonal. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the seasonal uh, variables or columns. So if you run this, okay, you will get a subset, okay, of the columns that you need to do 
the GG, the GG uh, pairs uh, uh, plot. Okay, and, and these are these are the ones. You have state, you have trends, trend strength, one of the features that the package give us. You have seasonal strength, seasonal peak year, and seasonal uh, throughout year. And we're going to be looking at this seasonal peak year because the question, again, the question is which is the peak quarter for holidays in each state? Okay, that's what we are we're trying to answer here. So uh, when you run this, okay, you run the 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 this this uh this command, okay, from the features, right? We got the the the, the holiday features, right? Okay. So we run this. We're going to do uh, the exercise says that you, you have to change the seasonal peak year and the seasonal trough year to factors. And the way they're doing it is with this command. Uh, seasonal peak year plus four multiplied by the seasonal peak year when it's equal zero. Okay, so that's kind of a hack to change the seasonal peak year, the seasonal trough year, and the, and the, other, the other ones two uh, factors, okay? That is also included in the in that, in that uh, section of the chapter. Then what I did here was using the glue package, what I did was uh, name those factors, name it as uh, the quarters, you know, that they belong, quarter, quarter Q1 for first quarter, Q2 for second quarter, and so on. For also for seasonal peak year, and seasonal trough year. And then I run my ggpairs command from ggalley. And in the theme, you know, so it, it's more understandable, uh, the, the, the labels in the X axis, at the bottom of the X axis, I wanted to, you know, get rotate to 60 degrees because if not, they're going to be, you know, all messed up. And you're going to visualize, you know, which are the states, which color corresponds to a state, et cetera. So when you run this, you get this plot, right? Okay. You get this plot. And then what we are going to look is as, at seasonal peak year here, right? Okay. What is the peak in terms of the four quarters? What is the peak for each of the states? Uh, if you do a count of that tourism, you know, subset of features, you do a count by state, you will see that they are uh, eight states. In instead of seven, I said seven, but it, that, that there are eight, okay? Eight, eight unique, unique states. And you can see them right here in this, you know, uh, plot here where you see like a bar, bar chart where it counts the, the, the number of, uh, you know, of instances for each state. So you have here ACT, you have uh, New South Wales, Northern Territory, and so on, uh, with as associated with their color. So in this plot here, seasonal peak year, you can see very clearly that most of them, most of those uh, states have their peak year in the first quarter, okay? For example, uh, the first one, which is ACT, the peak year is the first quarter because it has the most, you know, volume there, right? You know, the 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 figure is is the biggest in that in that quarter. Then you have also New South Wales, you have um, Northern Territories, Queensland, etc. So what is happening is that in the first quarter, which are the months of the first quarter? Usually, the months of the first quarter are January, uh, February, and March. This corresponds in Australia because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. This corresponds to the summer uh, season in, in Australia. Instead of the winter season, is the summer season. So there's going to be a lot more traffic for the purpose of holidays in those quarters than any other quarter. But there is, uh, you know, a, a reversal in that two of the states which are. Uh, I believe is uh, the green, right? This this one, which corresponds to the green, and also corresponds to uh, the blue one. This bluish color, it corresponds to Queensland and 
uh, Southern Australia. Uh, and, and, and sorry, uh, this one, the green, corresponds to uh, the Northern Territory, I think. Let me see if I'm correct. Yeah, Northern Territory. And then this one, which corresponds to Queensland. Well, these ones uh, correspond, the peak of, the, of, of, those, uh, of that season holiday correspond to the third quarter instead of the third quarter. So in the third quarter, the months that we associate with the third quarter are uh, July, August, and September, which in Australia are the winter, the winter, uh, uh, the winter season. So usually those Northern Territories and Queensland are at the north end, at the north geography, of Australia. The other ones are basically in the southern uh, part of Australia. Okay. So just seeing this, you know, a uh, little plot here, I believe that you can then pinpoint which uh, quarters are peak for each year in the in the corresponding states. Okay. Any any comments there? <laughs> no, uh, that's that, that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. That's absolutely clear. Um, yeah, maybe of course uh, thinking about uh, different situations, uh, then you uh, mm -hmm. might look carefully at the, the peaks, how they change, and everything. In this in this uh, case, right. we we're seeing this this. Um, uh, so, but, but remember that this is an accumulation of each of the years by quarter, right? So for example, this represents all the years, the first quarter for each of the states, okay? So it's kind of an aggregation that we're doing in this case by quarter, by quarter. And you see clearly in this particular problem, you see clearly where are the peaks? Because the other ones, they get a little bit, you know, they got a, a, a smaller, a smaller imprint in the other quarters. Okay, so most of them are the first quarter, except these two. Okay, which stands yeah. out, which are at the northern part of Australia, which in the winter season, uh, probably it will be more, you know, uh, 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 pe people will prefer it more because of the other weather. Okay. So we can say that the first and the third quarter uh, are uh, so mm -hmm. even for uh, the future. In the future, we can uh, like assume that uh, this situation would replicate for the right. fourth. Yeah. If, for example, if you are working for a, you know for a leisure a company, you know uh, hotels, uh, restaurants, and all that. Uh, you will know that the first quarter, if, you're, if your location is in those states, that you should prepare for it because you're going to have a higher than average influx than in other quarters. The same thing for the third quarter in those two, those two, those two states, uh, Northern Territories and uh, Queensland, okay? So yeah, you, you can use it as a, as a planning tool also. Okay, so uh, quickly, uh, in, the, in the other cohort, I did this one, okay, which it says, you know, write a function to compute the mean and standard deviation of a time series and apply it to the PBS uh, data. The PBS data is the prescription, uh, prescription data in Australia, which is, a, uh, is, is, uh, is the public health. Uh, system that they have in, in Australia. And the question that we have to answer is to plot the series with the highest mean and the series with the lowest standard deviation. So in other words, we're going to uh, create a function to calculate the mean and standard deviation for each of the time series that that PBS data uh, you know, has, okay? Then once you compute the mean, then you're going to plot which is the series with the, the time series with the highest mean, okay? And then the time series with the lowest standard deviation. So let's see how we, how we can, you know, attack that, that problem. Okay, so we have the data, right? 
Okay, the data comes from the package, uh, FPP3, and then you have the PBS. And the PBS has a collection of time series, depending is, is by month, the period is, is monthly. Uh, it has columns called concession type ATC1, which is one of the you know categories for prescriptions. Then you have ATC2, which is another kind of a subcategory from the ATC1, the scripts and the cost. So here, what it says here is write a function to compute the mean as a deviation of a time series. So I chose the scripts, okay? But I could choose the cost also, but I chose the scripts. The exercise doesn't, doesn't say. So that was my, you know, I, I, I kind of, you know, uh, uh, filled that gap. So in this case, what we're going to do is this function here, okay, what it does is when you uh, give the function a, a data frame, a stable data frame uh, from the scripts, it's going to calculate the features, right? The features of the mean of that time series and then the standard deviation of that time series, okay? So if we run it, right? And then we apply by, by, by piping, we apply the data frame, which is PBS, okay? So you're going to get this kind of uh, different time series. You're going to get the mean and the standard deviation. And so the first question is, which time series from this uh, data uh, package has the highest, right? So you can calculate the highest by piping the data frame, applying that function to get it, the mean and understand deviation of each time series. And then with slice uh, underscore max, you can get the mean, which is the maximum mean for, for that, for each of those uh, time series, okay? And then I'm going to uh, pipe it as character because I needed then to manipulate for the plot, okay? I, I, I cannot do it uh, numerically. So if I do that, I'm going to call this maximum mean scripts vector. It's going to be a vector and it's going to have this information, okay? It's going to have the type of concession, the type of payment, co-payments, is going to give me ATC1, which is this case is J, and it's going to give me ATC2, which is J01. And these are the values for the mean and the standard deviation. And this one is giving me, because I slice to the maximum, is giving me this uh, series is the one that has the highest mean for all the series contained in that, uh, in, in that uh, the, the data frame. Okay, so in other words, to uh, plot it, because I already changed it to character, what I'm going to do is filter by, you know, this, uh, these elements from, from the vector. Okay, that's what is, I'm doing here. Then I'm going to use the auto plot uh, function, okay, to auto plot that particular series, because that's the one that contains the highest mean. And then I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, label them label the X, the Y axis, the title, and subtitle with the string glue uh, function, which is going to give me some information at the top. So when I do this, okay, let me see if I have it right here. Okay, so this is what I get. So you have the PBX maximum mean time series is from concession concessional, Type copayments, ATC1 equal J, ATC2, J01, and this is the time series. Okay. Yeah. Comments there. <laughs> no, no, the, the, that's, uh, the features is uh, my comment uh, uh, about the, the function features, which is very useful uh -huh. uh, for simulating is actually the what the function that you want without, you know, it, it's mapping the data frame, uh, calculating the function that you to ask. And mm -hmm. then, so 
then you filtered and you have uh, uh, can can I see the data frame before you plot it? How how it looks? Uh, yeah, this is this is the data frame. Yeah, no, the the one when you filtered with the 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 maximum uh, mean and the standard deviation before you okay, plot it. It's, yeah, it is. Uh, it is. I think it's. I don't know if it's this one. This is the vector that contains the information to get the the time series. Or do or do you want to see the time series itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me see if this works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This so is now I yeah. So basically now I have uh, uh, the the. Uh, those values selected for each year. Mm -hmm. Year model. Yes. What, what, what if this filter does is from this vector that I created, you know, to get information from that series with the highest mean, what I do is filter each of those parameters with elements of that vector. Okay. So I only see in here the information from that particular time series. Okay, with with a combination with the combination of this, uh, you know, these elements. Okay, because that's the one that combination of elements. That's the one that contains the series with the highest mean. And what else? So this shows uh, like uh, a initial increase, and so a peak about. Uh, I can I can uh, really see the year month. The, mm -hmm. the first peak, but then uh, is slowing uh, down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pr probably this will go like this. The trend will go like this. It's going to peak uh -huh. here and then it's going to be down here, uh -huh. the trend. Yeah. Okay. So like okay. skew it on the, on the line. Okay, so. Uh, we have one part of the of the exercise, right? The, the highest mean. Now we're going to do the exercise of calculating the the the, the lowest uh, standard deviation. Okay, this one, the series with the lowest standard deviation. So what we're going to do is do basically the same thing. Okay. But instead of slicing with the max, we're going to slice with the mean, okay? And we're going to slice the mean, the minimum value of the standard deviation. What happened here, you know, when I do this, okay, get the minimum standard deviation scripts vector, what happened was that there are two series, okay? That have the lowest standard deviation, which in this case is zero. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I had to do a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of hacking here. Okay. Instead of co converting that vector to a character vector, like I did in the highest mean, I had to do it with uh, with as vector. Okay. Because it has two values. So the vector is is going to be composed of two, you know, kind of two lists, and then each list is going to have the elements for for the time series, okay? okay? So in this case, what I had to do, I had to do this function with uh, a parameter called i, because what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a function to provide the i that is going to be the number of time series that I'm going to be plotting, okay? In this case, the number of time series is two. But for example, if we had five, that the standard deviation was the same, was zero, okay? Then this fu function is able to plot all those five time series, okay? So it's kind of a generic uh, uh, function, okay? So uh, we do this, right? We do the function. And then what I do is for i in one, uh, two and row, which is the, the number of elements that this vector has, which is two. So it's, go, it's going to go down with one and two. 
if the elements were five, it was going to go from one to five, okay? And then uh, we uh, uh, run this and you should get your, your time series, okay? This one is general, concession general, type copayments, ATC-R, ATC-1-R, ATC-2-R. And as you can see, it's just a flat line. In other words, there was no activity, you know, for okay. that particular so for that particular set of, uh, of, uh, of elements in that time series. The same thing for the ATC-1-S and ATC-2-S, okay? It just was flat. All right? Okay, so it, that, it, it took me, no, the, the, the first time I did it, it took me, it, it took me some time, you know, to figure it out, okay? Especially this one, uh, because the other one is basically straightforward, okay? Because it's only one time series. But what happens when there's more than one time series, then you have to, you know, go into more functional uh, programming here. <laughs> yeah, but why that, that, that flat like that? Because that's the minimum. What was that? Why is that flat like that? Ah, because you know there's no activity in this uh, you know, in 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 this time series, you know, uh, corresponding to general copayments, ATCR, ATC one R, ATC two R, and the S two. Uh, there was no activity between between the time period of the of, of the data collection. Well, maybe. What, what if you feel that greater than zero? So the lies mean, but uh, uh, you, you uh -huh. first filter the standard deviation greater than zero, and then the lies mean. Yeah, but that, that's not what the, the, the exercise is ah, asking. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Remember, the exercise is asking the lowest standard deviation, uh -huh. and this one is the lowest. Yeah, okay, yeah. which corresponds to zero in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so basically that, that that's my you know my take on, on those exercises. Thank you. It's good to do to do these exercises because you know it gives you a little bit of uh it, it you know it challenges you to think about what is the problem, what they are asking. Uh, how you can then produce, you know, uh, a result that is, you know, that that is uh, the correct one. Okay. All right. So, Federica, if you can, you know, you can start with uh, uh, chapter five. Okay. okay, so I'm, um, if I can share the chapter from this other. Um, mm -hmm. Right, can you, can you see the, no. Not yeah, right. I'm seeing that uh, Federica has started screen sharing. Hey, it's fine. I can see myself, but I don't see anything. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. Okay, now, now, now I can see it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this, mm -hmm. uh, we, we go through the chapter. Uh, mm -hmm. as this is uh, like um, general, it provides general tools for uh -huh. um, to use in different uh, situations. So, uh -huh. uh, and we already uh, seen some, some of this um, uh, data set that are going to be used in the chapter. So, but basically first uh, um, introduce the, the, the process of forecasting time series and uh, Obviously, when you um, are dealing with data that are not uh, with raw data, you might want to uh, uh, tidy your data and to set them uh, uh, appropriately to be used in the, in the model. Then you do some visualizations 
to see how um, you can like specify and evaluate this, this time series and then you attempt estimating them. Uh, finally, uh, you produce a forecast uh, of the appropriate estimations. Okay, so this is a nice uh, DAG uh, that uh, uh, let um, like focalize on how the uh, elements of the uh, forecasting uh, process are uh, acting. So like you you see that the um uh, the, there is like they they go one after the other so you visualize then specify estimate evaluate and then visualize again when you do this then you can like um uh, have an idea of what's happening and then apply uh, an appropriate um, tool for uh, producing a forecasting. Okay, so this is uh, uh, basically you, um, in this case, fit a linear trend model, for example, to, to this is what uh, are the data used, uh, the global economy. Uh, in that case, you, uh, the, um, you can uh, like fit a linear trend model, okay, to the national G GDP data. And uh, here the chapter is quite straightforward uh, because we know how to do these things. And uh, so the, the, the data is the global economy, okay. And uh, first thing, so you know, it, it, we need to uh, tidy somehow so set up the data appropriately to be used in the in the time series so in this case we cannot use the the, the gdp as is but we need to, to have a proportion of it within uh, the size of the population so we do uh, gdp divided by population so we have the gdp per capita and this is this already uh, set our data uh, ready to be used. So to, you you then going to see how the GP, GDP per capita uh, changes along the time, and then you uh, then focalize if there's any um, uh, seasonalities or um, and so. And to do in order to do this, you, you might want to visualize. No, the, uh, and uh, this data. And um, the, this auto plot function is quite useful, even if I don't really. Uh, so I tend to always to use the ggplot function, uh, but this is uh, quite you know, stressful. Where do you, you use the auto plot and it does everything by itself? Um, you might want to filter one country because otherwise. Uh, um uh, it's just as the same uh, reasoning as before so you 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 think about your data and what is your question that you would like to answer and then you you need to uh, like restrict the problem to focusing on something that, and then you expand it back to see the big the big picture but uh, so for this reason you might want to uh, select a country and then see the GPT, GDP per capita for that country. And then you might, you, it, it, obviously is, it is possible to uh, select more countries and then with ggplot function, you grouping by country and then you see the, the time series for different countries. Uh, in this case, we see that. Uh, Sweden, the GDP per capita uh, in, in Sweden it went quite well within the years. And so it kept growing uh, um, the, the, some, some crisis that we can like uh, notice uh, after the, the 80s and within right, right before the, uh, 
so let's say the, the, the middle 90s. Um, these, these are when you, you um, looking at, the, at this data, you think about like political and economical uh, events. They are picked with the country for, for some reasons that may, they, they are for this reason influencing uh, the trend of the, uh, in particular for the, the GDP. Um, so, but okay, in, in this case, they are not specified. That, that would be nice to like uh, put an evidence of uh, what's happening in, in terms of political and economical um, happenings in Sweden for, for, for those, those years. That would have been interesting, you know, see uh, like a little specification just to have a picture of, 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 of an explanation of the reason for, for these drops. And then, you know, the, the uh, Okay, now, now we have an idea uh, of, of uh, what's happened in Sweden uh, for the GDP per capita and uh, with attempt to define a model. Okay. And in, in this case, the, they, they, um, the, the order um, uh, so th there is this function, this time series linear model, TSLM function that we have talked about in right, you know, the previous weeks. And um, it, it can be used for quite, quite easily, specifying uh, the outcome variable. So we are attempting to model to forecast the GDP per capita. And so then you use this tilde, which is a, allows you to, to make a formula. Uh, it makes in, in relation the variables, and then you can use this trend. So this is a special function for specifying a linear trend when it is used inside the time series linear model. So that, that's nice that this is another interesting function. Now I, I, I can use R, but it would be interesting to have a question mark to the trend function uh, to see what, what, are the, what is the documentation. Um, and then uh, the model is trained to estimate the values. So then this is the, 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 the model fit. Uh, so, uh, and then you apply the, 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 this formula inside the model function. So this is the fit. Uh, for each country, you have the model fit. Uh, and then to um, produce a forecast, uh, you use this function forecast, uh, specify the number of years. In, is quite a uh, uh, Federica, I, I lost okay. you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you 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 are you're back. <laughs> All right, because I saw the black screen and what happened. So, so we with this forecast function, you uh, apply it to the fit, the, uh, and then you set the gap, the uh, so the the, the 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 length of time you would like to use for for having the forecast. Uh, to be like releases in a, 
and it, I, I would say that the is quite it's quite a huge um, uh, length of time. You want, uh, mm, but anyway, so maybe maybe to see. Uh, in the longer term, what what will happen with this data? Uh, so this is from this. Uh, this is a forecast table or fable. Yeah, it yeah, the order says the, the the forecast table is even a fable, and each row corresponds to one forecast period for each country. And uh, the GDP per capita columns contains the forecast distribution, while the mean column contains the point forecast. Okay, so we have the mean and the point forecast. The point forecast is the mean or average of the forecast distribution. So and I think uh, that there's more to see, but uh, so you then you can you can see what is this uh, the result of this forecast with the, again the auto plot function selecting one country for example as a Sweden as we did before so you, you can see that the three years are expected to. Uh, at this trend, this growing trend, to be three years. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure that these are quite, maybe even more, maybe a larger gap in, in <laughs> length of time is, is, would, be, would be even better. But um, so you see in the longer term how, how it will change. I'm not sure about that. Okay, so and we have seen uh, an example. So for those things, how to use the the time series models, linear models, and then there are uh, other other sim simple forecasting methods. This here we. There's uh, the Australia production data set. Uh, again, you filter index uh, within these two quarters and then select the variable that you uh, that you use uh, uh, as an outcome. So this is a function filter index, which is a convenient short end for extracting a section. Of a time series, um, and then uh, you can apply the BRICS, which is this uh, new data set we have uh, um, just set, applying the model function on the mean. So we can see that here this is like a very seasonal trend repeating uh, within the, the quarters, so within the years. Uh, and here is specified like a, 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 the mean trend, which is about uh, 450 breaks. I don't know. Uh, have you got any uh, additions? Some um, things that you would like to uh, say. Otherwise, uh, there is a, uh, this other naive method. So inside the model, you use the naive. Uh, so as before, this is uh, the mean method. And here, uh, all future values are equal to the average of the historical data. 
while the naive method uh, is uh, especially used for uh, economic and financial time series. But what's happened here that you uh, basically, in fact, specify a length of time, you say, what will be my breaks level at TQA plus H, given what's happened in T before? So then, then there is this like this prediction. Uh, Federica, in the naive method, if you can go yeah. a little bit up, up. Yeah. Uh -huh. It says that all forecasts are, are to be value of the last observation. So that last observation, what we're going to do is to take it and then, you know, continue it through the forecast period. So okay. that last observation is going to give you then the next observation, okay, okay. and so forth. That's why you see in the graph, you see a line, okay? That it coincides, it starts at the last observation, mm -hmm. okay? And then you just, you know, uh, uh, continue. You know, you continue uh -huh. that, 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 that magnitude there. Okay. Okay, so that, that, that's why it's naive because, you know, it only, it only takes the last value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it, optimal when data follow random work. So they are also called random work for a gap. And then you can use this uh, RWO function random as a random work function instead of PNA. While if you want to use the seasonal naive method, so this might be like uh, slightly different, so you use this S naive function, but then you specify a lag. And in fact, if you see the math, the, the, the formula, uh, you again explain, uh, you, you, are, you want to explain what's happening in T plus H given T, but then uh, this is done by uh, an interval. So basically, you consider M a seasonal period and uh, K, which is the um, which is a part of uh, this. Um, H minus one divided by M. You basically start from T and you add H, which is a period, but then you have a replication of this uh, seasonal period, which is M. So you basically attempt to uh, consider a, a proportion of this uh, length of time. Uh, based on a seasonal period. Okay, do, just to add to the to your comment, that, you know, capital uh, uppercase T, those are the actual, the, the actual points that you have in the time series, right? Mm -hmm. You know, your, yeah. your, yeah. your actual period. Then that H, that lowercase H, what it corresponds is to the future uh, period. In other words, we're going to have X amount of observations that are facts, that are actual data. Then from the end of that uh, capital T, then you're going to have a horizon, uh, you know, a horizon uh, 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 length, which is going to be the future period for the forecast. Okay. So if you combine them, then you have the actual data plus the future, the, the, the future forecast. Yeah. Okay. So, and this is uh, showing, uh, in fact, this uh, seasonal period that is repeating itself. So focusing on this last bit, then it's replicating, it's replicating 
this is our place. That lag one, that component that it was added, you know, to the to the model, the lag year, which is only one lag, lag one. What it's trying to do is capture that, you know, uh, seasonality, right? Okay. Yeah. So in order to optimize the lag, you have to go to those plots that we uh, we we were talking in chapter three of the series decomposition. Okay, the, the ACF and partial ACF. There, you're going to see which are the lags that have the most magnitude. And those you have to experiment and try to use those points, those lags, to see if it captures more seasonality of the actual data. Okay, uh, because sometimes lag one won't be only the seasonality that you want to capture. Maybe there's multiple uh, seasonality too in the model, okay? And you can see in this one, in the bricks, uh, you s I believe that you see more than one seasonality here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then uh, there's a drift method, and um, this is a variation. Uh, allows for the forecast to increase or, or decrease over time. So we're now looking at the drift. Um, and so we are now adding uh, a period which is uh, so uh, uh, like some time like, like let's say for example that age is a year then we uh, make this year in proportion of the, uh, the, the, the the whole length of time of the time series that we are looking at minus one so this um coefficient coefficient will be used to um uh, as a like to be used to to uh, to be uh because this other part uh, you you then extrapolate a little section uh, a smaller section of the uh, of the of the time series that starts from two to the capital T, which is so the the the, uh, the end of the the time series that we are analyzing. Uh, we are analyzing. So um, you basically start from the the let's say the, the the value of bricks at time capital at time capital t and then you add uh little um like like big uh little uh, part section of the the time series um and you sum all these little pieces in proportion of the the length of time that you have chosen to analyze or something like that so about that in fact this drift you then you uh, the result is like the same as as the simple name you just have a line that uh, go forward from the last point. But then those little pieces uh, are like averages uh, within the whole time series. So you have an idea of what is the, the, the main drift of this, um, this trend. Okay, Federica, here, because yeah. it's also a naive method. Remember that the naive that we, that we spoke, spoke before, it only takes the last value, right? Or the time series. Mm -hmm. Well, in this one, in order to have a trend component, what it does is that 
it does an extrapolation between the first value of the time series and the last value, okay? And then it draws a line, extrapolating, right? It draws a line and then it continues that line. And that's your forecast, okay? So usually the naive methods are going to be very simple methods and they're going to take in time series, they're going to take on their last or the first observation, okay? And in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the plot, you can see, if you show the plot, you can see that the line starts from the first observation, right? Back in 1970, quarter one. And then it takes also the last observation. And what it does is fits a line there and then extrapolates the trend, okay? That's basically what the model does. <laughs> okay, so I think we, mm -hmm. we so we have uh, been through the, this, this first part and uh, it would be nice to do it better, maybe with a bit of R. So I suggest to, to continue maybe next, uh, next week. Maybe. It's even uh, at the top of the hour. I can see you. I can see you. <laughs> yeah, we can continue, you know, from where we stop here in 5.2. And then uh, maybe uh, we can do uh, maybe one, one of the exercises. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But this oh, is yeah. kind of the introduction. This kind of introduction to you know, uh, forecast, forecasting uh, techniques using different different methodologies. Okay. Hmm. All right. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So uh, have a great weekend, Federica, and I'll see you next week. Thank you, you do. Bye. Okay, get 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 a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> a big one, a big one. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye.